Thank, <clears throat> thank you all for being here. Permit me to share with you three hypotheses that I would like you to assume for the moment to be true. Um, hypothesis number one, many members of Congress do not understand artificial intelligence. Hypothesis number two, that absence of understanding may not prevent Congress from plunging in with enthusiasm <laughs> and trying to regulate this technology in a way that could hurt this technology. Hypothesis number three that I would like you to assume. There is likely a berserk wing of the artificial intelligence community that intentionally or unintentionally could use artificial intelligence to kill all of us and hurt us the entire time that we are dying. Assume all of those to be true. Please tell me in plain English two or three reforms, regulations, if any, that you would, you would implement if you were queen or king for a day. Ms. Montgomery. I think it comes back again to transparency and explainability in AI. Um, we absolutely need to know and have companies attest. What do you mean by transparency? So disclosure of the data that's used to train AI, disclosure of the model and how it performs, and making sure that there's continuous governance over these models, that we are the leading edge in terms governance of that regulation. Governance by whom? Technology governance, organizational governance, um, rules and clarification that are needed that this Which Congress- Which rules? I mean, this is your chance, folks to tell us how to get this right. Please use it. All right. I mean, I think, again, the rules should be focused on the use of AI in certain contexts. So if you look at, for example, Such the a so if you look at the EU AI Act, it has certain um, uses of AI that it says are just simply too dangerous and will be outlawed in the Okay, EU. so we ought to first pass a law that says you can use AI for these uses, but not others. Is that is that what you're saying? We need to define the highest risk uses. Is of there AI. anything yes. else? Um, and then, of course, uh, requiring things like impact assessments and transparency, requiring companies to show their work, um, protecting data that's used to train AI in the first place as well. Right. Professor Marcus, if you could be specific, no. this is your shot, man. <laughs> Talk um, in plain English and tell me what, if any, rules we ought to implement. And no, please don't just use concepts. I'm looking for specificity. Number one, a safety review like we use with the FDA prior to widespread deployment. If you're going to uh, introduce something to 100 million people, somebody has to have their eyeballs on it. There you go. Okay. That's a good one. Number I'm not sure I agree with it, but that's a good one. What else? You didn't ask for three that you would agree with. Number two, a nimble monitoring agency to follow what's going on, not just pre-review, um, but also post as things are out there in the world with authority to call things back, which we've discussed today. And number three would be funding geared towards things like AI constitution, AI that can reason about what it's doing. I would not leave things entirely to current technology, which I think is poor at behaving in ethical fashion and behaving in honest fashion. Um, and so I would have funding to try to basically focus on AI safety research. That term has a lot of complications in my field. Um, there's both safety, let's say, short term and long term. And I think we need to look at both. And rather than just funding models to be bigger, which is the popular thing to do, okay. we need to Let fund models to be more Professor, trustworthy. Because I want to hear from Mr. Alton. Mr. Altman, here's your shot. Thank you, Senator. Uh, number one, I would form a new agency that licenses any effort above a certain scale of capabilities and can take that license away and ensure compliance with safety standards. Number two, I would create a set of safety standards focused on what you said in your third hypothesis as the dangerous capability evaluations. One example that we've used in the past is looking to see if a model can self-replicate 
and self-exfiltrate into the wild. We can give your office a long other list of the things that we think are important there, but specific tests that a model has to pass before it can be deployed into the world. And then third, uh, I would require independent audits so not just from the company or the agency, but experts who can say the model is or isn't in compliance with these stated safety thresholds and these percentages of performance on question X or Y. Can you send me that information? We will do that. Um, would you be qualified to, uh, to, to uh, if we promulgated those rules, to administer those rules? I love my current job. Cool. Are there people out there that would be qualified? We'd be happy to send you recommendations for people out there, yes. Okay. You make a lot of money, do you? I make, no. Uh, I'm paid enough for health insurance. I have no equity in open AI. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. You need a lawyer. I need a what? You need a lawyer or an agent. I, I'm doing this because I love it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Kennedy. Uh, Senator Hirono. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Listening to, to all of 